All right, good morning, church. Are you ready to worship the Lord this morning? I'll get some of you waking up. Are you ready to worship the Lord this morning? Amen. Would you stand with me? Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, God, I thank you so much for all that you've done for us. God, I thank you, Lord, for your love. And Lord, I just pray right now as we worship you, Lord, that you would be praised and honored and glorified in this place. Lord, that you would inhabit the praises of your children. And I just pray as we worship you that we would lay our burdens down at the foot of the cross this morning. In your holy and awesome name. And God's people said, Amen. Amen. Let's praise. Sing, 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 and make music with the heavens. We will sing, 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 grateful that you hear us when we shout your praise. Lift high the name of Jesus. to know about you heaven and earth adore you kings and kingdoms bow down son of God you are the one you are the one we're living for sing sing you will sing nor forsake us. Oh, we are so thankful for you, Jesus. Father of kindness, you have poured out grace and brought me out of darkness. You have filled me with peace. Giver of mercy, oh, my help. Oh, 
church. And all your promises are yes and amen. Beautiful Savior. Beautiful Savior, you have brought me. That is such good news, isn't it? 
glad a few of you agree. That's good. Well, I'll just let you know it is for the rest of you that didn't want to say anything. So you can go ahead and go ahead and be seated. We're gonna we're gonna get ready to have communion this morning, and you need to know it's a time of celebration. How many of you? Let me let me ask you this: How many of you are kind of glad that 2020 is over? Okay. Okay. How many of you are glad that 2021 is here? Now, how many of you are more excited about 2021 arriving than you are about 2020 getting over? Oh, now you're going, huh, where's he going with this? I'm, I, I hope I don't... Well, I'm going to say I hope I don't, I really hope I don't step on any toes, but I'm, I got a hunch I'm going to. Okay, so I hope you got your big boy pants and your big girl panties, and I hope you got your steel-toed shoes on. There has been a lot of people inside and outside the church that have focused so much energy, so much attention on how bad 2020 was that they've missed how good God has been. I challenge you, honestly, I mean, don't, don't do it right now unless you have to, but I firmly believe this. If, if you as a believer will sit down and count your blessings you will find that even through 2020, and I know some of you went through some horrific, th I know some of you went through some, just some horrible stuff, but if you will sit down as a believer and count your blessings, you'll see that they outweigh the issues, the problems, the struggles. We have a tendency to make things bigger, the things that we focus on. That's why... That's why they call it magnifying. And we're called to magnify Christ. We're called to magnify the Lord. Not our problems. When you look through a, a microscope, what are you doing? You're magnifying something. You're, you're making it bigger so you can see it more clearly. We need to magnify Christ more than we do the issues and the problems and the struggles. Because you know what? I mean, hey, Happy New Year. I'm glad you're here with us. 2021, woo, praise the Lord. We're three days in and so far so good. But I'm going to tell you, hang on because life happens. Life happens. And it's not always pretty. But with God, there's always purpose. And there's always hope. And we can look forward to good things. So we're going to get ready to participate in communion. And, and as some of you know, my favorite, my favorite passage for communion is not out of 1 Corinthians, but it's out of Luke chapter 22, where Jesus said this in verse 15 at the Last Supper. He said, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. In other words, what he was saying is, I've been looking forward to this. The writer of Hebrews in chapter 12 says, for the joy set before him, in reference to Jesus, for the joy set before him, he endured the cross and its scorn and its shame. Jesus went through hard stuff, bad stuff. He died on a cross but he had joy because he wasn't focused on the cross. He was focused on those that put him on the cross. Not in hateful vengeance, but what did he say as he's lying there with his arms spread out and spikes being driven through? Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. His focus was on what's to come. His focus was on our salvation. And so on that, on that last night, at that last supper, Jesus was able to look at those 12 men, all 12 of them, Judas included, and 
and say, I have looked forward to this. I, I have eagerly desired having this meal with you. Because guess what? It, it starts a new thing. There's a new implementation. He, he let them know that, you know what, the old things are gone. Everything that, that, that this Passover meal pointed to, everything that it reminded them of, of, of what happened in Egypt, generations before them, pointed to this moment where he, the Passover lamb, was going to take our place. And there was a new covenant in his blood, which is what the wine represented. He was excited about that. We need to be excited as we come together and we get ready to celebrate this table. We're celebrating not just a, a new year, but we're celebrating the faithfulness of God, the faithfulness of Jesus who is still looking forward. We don't know when our last breath is here. We don't know when he's coming back again, but guess what? He's looking forward to it and so can we. And this reminds us that he is a promise keeper. Amen? So if I can get our servers to come down, we're going to pass out these elements. I'm going to encourage you. Again, number one, you don't need to be a member of Mountain View in order to participate in communion with us. We just ask that you know Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Number two... Don't be chit-chatting with the people next to you. Take, take this time and, and allow the Holy Spirit to put his spotlight on your heart. Paul tells us in 1 Corinthians, he says, look, we ought to examine ourselves. We need to examine ourselves because if we, if we take this in an unworthy manner, not recognizing the body of Christ, we drink condemnation upon ourselves. Don't want to do that. So spend some time, some quiet time, Lord. Search my heart. I want to I do this right. I want to honor you. And then hold on to the elements until we've all been served. It's, it's in a little cap. There's going to be your, your cracker on top and, and the juice underneath. But hold on until we've all been served. We'll take communion together. We're going to wait for one another.
Would you stand with us this morning? You know, it's interesting. I'm, I'm, I'm actually standing here just looking over this passage in Luke. And I've got an area highlighted. And I don't normally go this far when, I'm, when we're having communion, celebrating communion. But it, it just caught my eye. And it's in the same passage. It's in the same context. It's in the same breath. I mean, it was, it was that night. It's in verse 31. And this is Jesus. Now understand, this is after they've just had communion. Jesus has just instituted this. They've celebrated this meal together. And now Jesus turns to Simon, Simon Peter, and he says this, Simon, Simon, Satan has asked to sift you as wheat. But I've prayed for you that your faith won't fail. I think we just need to just need to grab hold of that for a minute because I you know sometimes we go through these we go through these ceremonies these rituals and oh hey uh, you know I just oh yeah I had communion it's great spiritual experience and we walk out the door and we get hit with life and go what in the world just happened I just I was just doing everything good Jesus told Simon look Satan's asked to sift you and 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 it's frustrating to me I'm sure it was frustrating to, to Simon. Jesus did not tell Satan no. Satan had to ask permission. God didn't say no. But Jesus' response was, don't worry, I've prayed for you. I've prayed for you that your faith won't fail. He went on to tell him, you, you're going you're gonna to mess up. You're going to deny knowing me, but I've prayed that your faith won't fail. So when you come back, when you... When you Stand back up. Strengthen your brothers. Know this. I don't know what you're going through today, and I don't know what you're going to go through when you walk out these doors. But know this. Jesus has prayed for you. The Bible says that he stands forever at the side of the Father to intercede for you. So that's good news. I mean, you can, you can handle it. Through him, you can handle it. You can make it. Don't, don't let your faith fail. And if you... If you trip, if you fall, get back up. Get back up. We'll go ahead and open that. Let's take that piece of bread out. Understand what Jesus said. He said this, as he broke the bread and he passed around, he said, this is my body. It represented, it symbolized his body. This is my body. It's given for you. He was soon to be beaten, bruised, whipped. He said, I'm doing it for you. He said, remember. Remember what I'm doing. As often as you eat this, remember it. So Lord, as we hold this bread up, we remember the price that you paid. We remember that this symbolizes your body that was given for us. You taking our place. And we thank you for that. Lord, we we celebrate that. We're, we're in awe of that. And Lord, I ask that you would bless not only this, this morsel of bread, but Lord, that you would bless your people today. Lord, that you would comfort, you would encourage, you would strengthen each one in this place. And we'll be quick to give you all the thanks, Lord, in your name. Amen. Go ahead and take the bread. and open up the juice carefully if you can. Let's hold that up. And as you hold it up, remember, <clears throat> Jesus said, this is my blood. It symbolized his blood. You see, without, without the shedding of blood, there's no forgiveness of sin. Blood of bulls and goats could never atone for us but also there was no covenant ever established that could be established without being sealed in blood Jesus said this is my blood 
of the new covenant. We don't have to offer animals anymore because Jesus shed his blood. Lord, this morning as we hold this cup up, we're reminded that by your blood, our sins are covered. We're reminded that by your suffering and the shedding of your blood, we can be made white as snow. We can be restored to right relationship with the Father. We thank you. Lord, we're, we're humbled by it. And Jesus, I ask you to bless this cup as we take it in remembrance of all that you've done. And Lord, looking forward to all that you have for us. In your precious name, go ahead and take the cup. Now, church, just for a moment, in your own words, just give him thanks. Just, just praise the Lord this morning. Thank him for bringing you through 2021. Thank him for bringing you through yesterday. Thank him for bringing you here today. Thank him for his love for you today and his promise for his love for you tomorrow. Lord, we give you thanks and we give you praise and glory and honor this morning because you are worthy. And Lord, while we have the choice to focus our attention on so many things around us, today, here and now, we choose to focus on you, to, to magnify you. Lord, to honor you. We ask that you would be glorified. And Lord, that we'd put a smile on your face today. Jesus, we ask your blessing on the remainder of this service. We pray your Holy Spirit be free to move in us, through us, among us. Lord, that, that the heavens would rejoice. We thank you, Jesus. And all God's people said, amen. Well, you're standing, so if you're comfortable... Why don't you go around and say hi to a few people. Let somebody know that you are glad that they are here today.
Good morning, Mountain View. Good morning, Mountain View. Thank you for finding your seats. Thank you for finding your seats, Brandon. <laughs> Pastor. Oh. Three hundred and sixty two days now till twenty twenty two. Woo! Are you counting the days? Oh, a little early, I guess, huh? Okay. So well. We have just a few announcements here. So, uh, let's see, Wednesday, we have Wednesday at 10.30 in the morning, this Wednesday, uh, take down the Christmas decor special, extravaganza. So, if you would like to help with that, that would be much appreciated. <laughs> there could be. I'm not sure. Surprise donuts. Business meeting in the end of February. And so, just a heads up. And we have a, uh, one of the board members' um, terms expiring, but uh, Dave is up for re-election if he's willing to be re-elected, and he says yes, and just a little bit of info on that. So uh, anybody else that wants to run, I guess you have to talk to, I don't know how that works, Pastor. Just let Pastor know. Okay. And so men's breakfast is this coming or Saturday, but it's not a breakfast, it's a dinner. So it's not in the uh, brochure, but anyway, it is a dinner at 5.30, and it'll be this Saturday for you guys to come. We have a lot to talk about, a lot of things to talk about. So, And I don't have any other announcements other than that, so we have the ushers come forward. We're going to have a special from MJ and company, I believe. MJ. Okay. Lord, we just, let's pray. Thank you so much, Father, for giving us uh, this opportunity to be together. And we praise you, Lord, and give you glory. And we thank you for all that you've given to us. And we give back to you the tithes and the offering, Lord, as you entrusted with us to be stewards. And we thank you so much for your provision. And we just thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Hello. <laughs> I feel like I'm prepared today. Um, I was struggling with a stuffy nose, not because I am sick, but just because of life and its struggles. But I'll try very hard to get through this song, and I want to thank you for letting me do this. Um, I want to share this song with all of you because... Um, uh, a couple months ago, I had a very good friend message me, and she's like, can you pray for me? And I'm like, oh, yeah, <laughs> I'll pray for you. Um, and in two weeks, I had started getting worried because the situation didn't look like it was getting any better. But two weeks, finally, she messages me, and she's like, hey, everything's doing good. Everything's, you know, better. I'm like, I'm like, good, I was getting worried, and I let her know that, and her message back to me, it wasn't like, it wasn't anything bad, it was just how I took it, but when she messaged me back, she's like, why, didn't we pray about this situation, and I'm like, dang, you're right, and I wanted so badly to justify my doubt, I so badly wanted to justify why I was worried. I mean, how many of us have prayed and been like, God, you're not listening to me. 
God, you don't hear me. God, you don't see me. You don't see my pain. You don't see the struggle because I've been praying for years. I've been praying and I believe that you would have answered by now and you don't. I wanted to tell her that, but then at the same time, it's like, am I not a Christian? Do I not claim to have this faith in God? And I I look at this text, and I had to look at it for a good couple of days, and I'm just like, you're right. God, you're still God. You still have me in your plan because I'm here. You still have everything, and everything's okay. And that's why I want to share this song with you because last year was terrible, <laughs> but he had everything under control. And I'm super thankful for that. And like I said, I'll try to get through this. <laughs> so thank you. <laughs> Unanswered prayers I wish wasn't there And I have asked a thousand ways That you would take my pain away You would take my pain away I am trying to understand how to walk this weary land Make straight the paths that crooked lie Oh Lord, before these feet of mine Oh Lord, before these feet abide When my world is shaking Heaven stands when my heart is breaking, I never leave your hands. When you walked upon the earth, you healed the broken, lost, and hurt. I know you hate to see me cry. One day you will set all things right. Yeah, one day we'll set all things right When my world is shaking Heaven stands When my heart is breaking I never leave your hands Your hands Thank you, MJ, and sister, who I can never remember your name, I'm sorry. That was awesome. Well, here we are. 
more things change, the more some things will remain the same. So that being said, why don't you take your Bible out, hold it up. By the way, it's good to see somebody I did not get to get around and say hello, but good to see you all here. So repeat after me. This is the Word of God. It's able to make me wise. It's useful for teaching, correcting, rebuking, and training in righteousness. And this message is for me. Amen. Well, I'll tell you what, I've been, <clears throat> I've been chewing on this message all week and praying about it. And, and as I've been praying about what to preach today as we head into a new year, I've had a lot of thoughts and I've had a lot of ideas. <laughs> things that I want to say, things that I want to comment on, things that I believe are truly from the heart of God, things to us specifically here at Mountain View and, and to others in general. And yet I'm, I'm somewhat torn. As confident as I am in the, in the topic and the need, and, it's, and I'll, I'll, I'll let you know this is actually going to spread out over a couple of weeks as, as I started putting th thoughts to digital paper, it just, it just got too big. So it's going to stretch out over a couple of weeks, but I'm, I'm, I'm somewhat torn because I know myself and I know my personality. And I don't want to wax political. I'm not a, I'm not a political person and I, and I don't want to delve into the politics of 2020 and neither do I want to delve into the plethora of conspiracy theories and things that have been going on over the last year. Surrounded pretty much all of 2020. But at the same time, I think that there are things that need to be said, challenges that need to be laid out, and perhaps even a gentle rebuke or two. So hold on. Don't shoot the messenger. I am reminded as I look at Isaiah the prophet, that when he was speaking of the Messiah who was to come, in Isaiah chapter 42, verse 3, he said these words about Jesus' approach. A bruised reed he will not break, and a smoldering wick he will not snuff out. And as I read that and I think about that and I think about the message, I, I pray, Lord, I don't want to be that one that's going to break a bruised reed. I don't want to be that one that's going to put out a smoldering wick. I, I, I believe God has called me to make disciples. He's called me to fan the flame. He's called me to build up and not to tear down. So please bear that in mind. I'm probably making it sound like it's worse than it's really going to be. But bear that in mind as we move forward. Let's, let's pray. Lord, this morning as I have the, the honor, the privilege to bring your word, I pray that you would guide not only my thoughts, my heart, but Lord, also my lips. I pray that as we get into your word that you would open our hearts and our minds that we might receive, but Lord, not only hear, but be doers. Lord, help us to get out of your word what you put into it for us. And thank you in advance for this opportunity. In your precious name, Lord. Amen. So I've titled today's message, and, and oddly enough, it comes out of Isaiah 8, 12. Do not fear what they fear. <clears throat> Do not fear what they fear. Now, to give you a little bit of context, God was speaking to Isaiah, whom he had called to speak to the people. God called Isaiah to prophesy, to guide, to direct his people at a time 
when his people had been walking away from him. He was called, he had the responsibility to bring the word of God to a nation that had rejected him. Although they had a good start with him, they rejected him and his law for the freedoms of secular life. Moral relativity and all forms of pagan idolatry. So Isaiah was, <clears throat> was called to speak to a people that some were serving the Lord. There were certainly some still serving him. Remember when, when Elijah had, he had the same call and responsibility. And when he cried out to the Lord and just wanted to die, he said, I'm the only one left. And the Lord said, no, I've reserved, I've reserved 7,000 that haven't bowed the knee. You're not the only one. God always preserves a remnant. There is a faithful remnant. But Isaiah was called to speak to these people who had walked away from God, who had traded freedom in God for freedom of secular life. They had, they had traded it all in. They had swapped it out. And many of those people now were afraid. They were afraid of losing their nation. They were afraid of losing their way of life. God had said, look, I'm pulling my hand off. You're going into captivity. You've walked away from me. You've sinned against me. Thank you. You want it? You got it. That's the way it's going to be. And they were afraid of losing their positions of authority. They were afraid of losing now those freedoms that they had forsaken. They were afraid of losing their way of life and their home and their, their just the way that they had grown up understanding. Does that sound familiar at all? It's almost as if, it's almost as if Isaiah was speaking to us. There's a warning and there are people that are afraid today. We see it all around us. 2020 has been filled with fear. Many of the people of Isaiah's day had a form of godliness and yet they denied its power, just as Paul had written to Timothy and warned him that in the last days, people will have a form of godliness. You can see it for yourself in 2 Timothy 3, 5. They'll have a form of godliness and yet deny its power. They'll, in other words, they'll, they'll go to church. They'll make claims. They'll be spiritual. They'll be religious, whatever. They'll have an attachment to some kind of faith, but it's not going to do them any good because they're not living it out. Even people that claim to be born-again Christians maybe grew up in the church. They, they have a form of godliness. They remember what they had learned in Sunday school. Maybe they have a cross hanging on their wall. Maybe they've got, you know, 1 Corinthians 13 hanging over their, over their bed or something. They got a few passages. They remember some, they like to say Merry Christmas, not Merry Xmas. They've got a form of godliness, but they, they deny its power because they, they don't live it. It was the same back in Isaiah's day. They, the, the, the priests, the high priests, the scribes, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, they, they had a form of godliness. They knew Scripture, but they weren't living it. It's interesting to me, one of, one of the times that you see Jesus rebuke the crowds, he, he actually is rebuking the Pharisees. And he said, man, you, you search the scriptures because you think that by them you're, you're going to have life. He's saying, you're, you're actually reading the scriptures. You're studying them because you think you're going to find life in there. And yet it's those same scriptures that are talking about me and you're rejecting me because you've got this predetermined outcome. You're trying to put your slant, your interpretation on what's going on, and you're missing it. You're missing it. And so Isaiah <clears throat> is told, don't fear, what they, don't fear what they fear. Don't call everything a conspiracy. If you're, it's, it's really ironic. He said, don't call everything a conspiracy that they're calling a conspiracy. And that's why I give you the context. He's the guy that's called. It's, it wasn't just the... It wasn't just the uh, the faithful that we're talking about conspiracies. It was, it was the whole of the nation that was talking about conspiracies. And so as we look back on 2020, 
we can see that a lot of people, many people, are living in fear. Now think about the, think about the things that, that people have been afraid of over the last year. And this is not a complete list, but this is just several things that jumped out at me. Fear of COVID-19. Fear of running out of toilet paper. That was real fear. Fear of losing their jobs and not being essential. Fear of the economy. Fear of neighbors and strangers not wearing masks. Fear of those wearing masks. Fear of being reported for standing too close or for not wearing a mask. Fear of homeschooling. Fear of shopping. Fear of worshiping together. Fear of gathering together. Fear out of what will happen if you're caught worshiping or gathering together. Fear of who will be elected. Fear of how the other side will, re will react if their candidate isn't elected. Fear of how the candidate will act if they are elected. And the list goes on and on and on. Can I tell you that fear is not a healthy thing? Except for fear of the Lord. Fear of the Lord is the only healthy fear that's out there, but that, that it, that's a different translation of the word fear. It's a different meaning. It means to revere, or honor, respect. Now there's, there's six different Greek words, and this is using the NIV, okay? So if you're using the, new, the, the King James and the New King James, they translate a little bit different, but this holds the same. I spent a lot of time looking at it. Six different Greek words that are translated afraid in the NIV, in the New Testament. Okay, the New Testament was originally written in Greek. Phobomai, used 53 times. Phobos, twice. Imphobos, once. Those three kind of share the same root. There's tremo, one time. Delia, once. And delos, twice. Delia and delos, using the same root. So if you add that up, what's that? 53, 55, 56, 57... 58, 60, 60 different times that the word afraid is in the New Testament. Then there's two more times that the word afraid is inserted, but it's not found in the Greek. It's put in there just, and this is in the NIV, it's put in there just to bring clarification to the thought. Okay, so if you're doing a word study or whatever, you can get into it. So, so 60 times with six different words, that's translated afraid. And you're probably thinking to yourself, wow, that's really interesting. What's the point? I hope you're thinking it's interesting. Maybe it's just me that finds that stuff interesting. Here's the interesting thing. The English language, as complicated as it is, oversimplifies some words and thereby makes them confusing, or makes some things confusing that's, that's uh, translated into the English. And fear, or afraid, is one of those words. There's, there's a fear that means terror, or simply take, being afraid or, or being cautious. That's, that's one translation of the Greek, or one Greek word. There's fear of the Lord, as we've already mentioned, which means to revere, to honor, to respect. And then there's fear that results, track with me here, fear that results with actions unbecoming a believer. There's three different right there, but we use the English word fear or afraid to just cover it over. And so you have people that will read fear the Lord and because of you know, where, they, where they've been in life and the experiences that they have, all of a sudden they're thinking they have to have this terror of God. They have to be afraid of God. You don't have to be afraid of God unless you're walking in opposition to God. Then you should be afraid, be very afraid. But if you are Honoring God, if you are serving God, you should have a fear of the Lord, not a terror type fear, but a respect and honor, like you should of your parents. 
No matter how old or young you are, we ought to fear, we ought to revere, we respect our parents. And the interesting thing, in the, in the Ten Commandments, when it tells us to honor father and mother, that doesn't have a time frame on it. And it doesn't say if they're honorable. We have a responsibility to honor our parents. They brought us into this world. You can always learn from their example. You can learn either how to serve God, how to be like them, or learn what not to do. But your parents can always serve as a good model. A good, well, some of them aren't good model but you know things to learn and so as we read in the english we go well fear the lord somebody might freak out go oh no 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 revere honor respect somebody else might say well you know well fear just means uh you know just don't be afraid i've been told there's 365 times i have not i'm not i've never counted it up i don't know if it's actually true that there's 365 passages in the, in the Bible that say don't be afraid or fear not or, or something to that liking. I don't know. I know that there's a lot. And if it's 365, great. You know, I mean, one a day. That's, that's awesome. I love it. That's, that's super. I don't know what translation you're looking at, but, but we can also end up looking at fear through the English translation, go, oh, that's not such a big deal. I just, okay, I just need to not be afraid. I just need to not be a scaredy cat. I need, to, I need to be bold, put on the full armor of God and walk headlong. Maybe with some. But it's, it's the third one I want to talk about today. And that, that's the one that is a fear that results in Actions unbecoming a believer. You probably, some of you may have heard about actions unbecoming an officer when, when referring to the military. You get kicked out of the military for that. You get stripped of your rank. You got no retirement. You got nothing. Actions unbecoming a believer, a child of God. And that's what we need to look at today. So don't fear what they fear, but let's see what the Lord has to say. The Greek word delos in, in the English alphabet, D-E-I-L-O-S, delos, is only used three times in Scripture. Twice in the Gospels where it's trans, translated afraid. And both of those times are the same account, one in Matthew and one in Mark. And this is the kind of fear that I'm talking about. This is the kind of fear that we're not to have. All right? And, and it's in, if you keep in notes, it's in Matthew chapter 8. It's also in Mark chapter 4. And it's the account when, when Jesus tells the disciples, hey, let's get in the boat, let's go to the other side. They get in the boat and they get halfway across. Jesus is asleep. And this big storm comes up. And waves are crashing, and it says, both Matthew and Mark, says that the disciples were afraid. They woke Jesus up, and listen to what they said. Lord, don't you care? We're about to die. Don't you care? We're in trouble here. We're about to die, and you're sleeping Jesus gets up, he rebukes the wind and the waves, and then he turns around and he looks at those 12 men and he says, why were you delos? Why are you afraid? Why are you acting in a way unbecoming a believer? There are only two times that that word is used. Jesus used it speaking to his disciples, those men that he had called, handpicked to carry the gospel to a lost and dying world, to establish a church in a world that, that had walked away from God, that had run after the, the, the pleasures of life. He looks at those 12 men, he says, why are you delos? Why are you acting like this? 
You see, it's, very, it's, it's important to understand that, and I hope, you're, I hope you're tracking with me. I hope you're connecting the dots. It's important to understand that this word, it's only used twice. Jesus is speaking to his disciples. He's speaking to you and me. They were getting a gentle rebuke. Don't act like that. You're not acting like my child. You're not acting like my kid. You got my name. Act like it. I've had the, the privilege of being able to to counsel, to talk with kids over the years. And, and sometimes I've had parents bring their kids and they were having a really, really difficult time with. You know, the kid's getting a little bit rebellious and doing dumb things and, and kind of embarrassing their parents. And, you know, and then it's especially worse in a small town because everybody knows you. And they know your parents. They know your grandparents. You know, you've been there for three, four, five generations, whatever. And I I remember talking to one young man and saying, and, you know, this guy was 10, 11, 12 years old at the time. I said, hey, what, you know, what's going on? Why are you, why are you acting? I don't know. I said, don't you realize that you've got a good name in this community? Your dad worked hard to have a, establish a good name in this community, and, and your granddad worked hard to establish a good name in this community. You've had a good name in this community for generations. You've, got, you've been given a good name. Now you need to act like it, because everybody knows you, and everything you do reflects on your parents and your grandparents. You've got a good name. Act like it. Church, as believers, as born-again believers with the blood of Jesus over us, we're told that we are heirs of Christ, co-heirs of Christ and heirs of God. We are, we are adopted as sons and daughters. We bear his name. It's time we act like it. Do not delos. Don't be afraid and act in ways that, that are unbecoming that name that you represent. Don't fear what they fear. There's a lot of things we can, a lot of things that we've been afraid of. I, I just gave a, a list, and I, you know, I can remember over the years reading about, well, in the last days, you know, Jesus said in the last days, a man's enemies will be the members of his own household, and thinking, how in the world can that happen? But I'm seeing Today, these days where, where neighbors are calling the police on their neighbors because they're not wearing a mask, or they're going, but it's not just neighbor against neighbor. There's families that are divided over political positions, over whose candidate you're supporting and what you're supporting. There's, they're doing this, and they're doing it even over COVID and the, and the you know, oh, you're, you're following the rules and the regulations. You're not following the rules and the regulations. I know, I know a pastor who cannot see his grandchildren because he continues to preach in public. And this isn't a spiritual... Yeah, it is. That pastor and his wife have to decide, have had to decide what's more important. Serving God and doing what they've been called to do. And some might say, well... Well, couldn't he just go to online? Couldn't he just, couldn't he just do this? I remember reading somewhere in Hebrews, don't forsake the gathering together. You know what we're seeing is we're isolated. We're being told, oh, you can worship from home. You can worship over your computer. And anybody that's watching on Facebook, don't take, I mean, some of you, maybe you need to take this personally. Again, don't shoot the messenger. For some, this will be a gentle rebuke. For some, this might be a harsh rebuke. And for some... I know that there are, there are people that are, they've got legitimate reasons to be worshiping from home. I get that, okay? So if, if that's you, don't take this personally. You know, you, gotta, you know who you are. But the, the command to not forsake gathering together wasn't just for that day. It's for today. There is something powerful. There's, there is something more to church than just hearing a preacher preach. We are the body. We are not called to be divided. We're called to be united. And I don't, 
have bits and pieces of my body laying all over the house. I take the whole thing with me. Sometimes I wish I could leave bits and pieces. They don't work quite like they used to. <laughs> Whatever. And so that pastor's had to decide, do I, do I honor God and do what he's called me to do? Or do I satisfy the flesh so I can see my grandkids? Do I just go with the flow and go online, do whatever? You know how hard it'll be? You know what? I, this is a fear that I have. One of these days we get everybody all racked up, hooked up on, on online, and then that church, that pastor, whatever, um, doesn't fit into the parameters of, of what they're supposed to say and whatnot. And all of a sudden, you don't have access to the Internet. Then what are you going to do? Have, have any of you ever had a hard time getting online? You think they can't just turn a switch? Then what are you going to do? That pastor, that friend of mine, he's, he's determined that it's, it's more important for him to do what God has called him to do and be a witness to his children and his grandchildren by saying God is a priority. So pray for the pastors that are dealing with stuff like that. Pray for your friends who, who are believers, but they have non-believing family members who are going to use things like this. It's, it is a subtle way to divide. It's a subtle way to break down and get you to compromise. And, and oftentimes, I, I don't even think, I really don't think that this friend of mine, I don't think that, that his kids are trying to, to drive a spiritual wedge in there. They're just not serving the Lord, and they just think you can... Remember, it's, we, we don't fight against flesh and blood. Don't consider your kids or your parents or your siblings or your neighbors the enemy. Recognize the enemy using them. Don't delos. Don't give in to the fear. Don't fear what they fear. And don't start acting in a manner un, unbecoming a believer. Now, as I said, both, both of those times, the two times in the Gospels that that word delos is used, is, it's used as Jesus brings a gentle rebuke to his disciples. He says, you're not acting right. You're messing up. Now, there's a third time that it's used. Not in the Gospels, but in the, in the New Testament. And that third time is found in Revelation chapter 21. King James translates it fearful for all three of those. I told you if you want to look at the King James, you'll find it translated differently. NIV translates it afraid. This third time, the NIV in Revelation 21 translates it cowardly. It's the same word. It's translated cowardly. Now, I want you to take a look. Let's go to Revelation chapter 21. And I want you to see what the Lord is saying here. You might want to highlight it. You might want to take some notes. But I'm going to start back at verse 6 just to give a little context. This is John writing. He's sharing what the Lord is revealing to him. He said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. So we know that this is Jesus speaking to John. To him who is thirsty, I will give to drink without cost from the spring of water of life. He who overcomes will inherit all of this, and I will be his God, and he will be my son. He who overcomes. And this is, this is end time stuff. This is after all the truth. This is after all that wacky stuff. He who overcomes, he says, and I will be his God. He's going to inherit it. I will be his God. He will be my son or daughter. Verse 8, but the cowardly, the delos, the unbelieving, the vile, the murderers, the sexually immoral, those who practice magic arts, the idolaters, and all liars, their place will be in the fiery lake of burning sulfur. This is the second death. 
See, that's what, that's what we generally, typically, generically refer to as hell. But if you want to be specific and correct, hell is actually cast into the lake of fire. He says all these, all these bad people, all these, the murderers and the liars and the thieves and the sexually immoral, they're not going to be in heaven with me they're going to be in the lake of fire. And I find it really interesting that the very first group of people that he mentions is not the sexually immoral. Wow, you know, we as believers, we look around at all the sin in the world, and we go, some of those things are just, they're just wrong. It's just really bad. Murder, that's a bad one. Oh, sexual immorality? Whew, I don't care whether, I don't care what your flavor of immorality is. Bad, that's wrong. Oh, dirty, bad, bad. Lying, cheating, stealing, that's all really bad stuff. Look at what God starts that list with. The cowardly, the delos, those who are living in a manner unbecoming the name of Jesus. He's speaking again to believers. Don't fear what they fear. Don't live in fear. Don't be bound. Don't make your determination, your decisions, your, your actions based on fear of the things that they fear. No, fear the Lord. Honor, revere, respect Him. Obey Him. If you have a choice between Him and the world, obey God. He's got a bigger hammer. The cowardly, they're not going to make it. The delos, they're not going to they're not going to make it. Now, there's one more place. That is a nice song. It's okay. Isn't that embarrassing? Especially when the pastor calls you out. It's, a, it's okay, Lynette. <laughs> there's one more place. In scripture where that same root word is used. And this time it's in the Greek, it's it's pronounced delia. Same root word, dale, delia. And this time it's, it's translated timidity. And it's in 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 7. This is as Paul is writing to Timothy, and he says this: God has not given us a spirit of timidity. He hasn't given us a, a spirit of delia. That doesn't, that, 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 that fear, that timidity, that, that tendency to, to act in a manner unbecoming the name, that doesn't come from God. That temptation, that desire, that, that excuse making, whatever, that, that, that doesn't come from God. This is what comes from from God spirit of power of love and of a sound mind or in some translations self-control power not a not a form of godliness denying his power godliness utilizing that power that's, that's a great definition of meek. Meek is power under control. What has God given us? Spirit of power. The spirit of love. That tempers things. Spirit of love. Man of self-control. I don't have to give in to Dahlia. I don't have to give in to Delos. I don't have to act the way the world acts. I don't have to, I don't have to do that. I don't have to fear what they fear because I fear the Lord. But I need to remember I've got love. If I don't have love, I don't have the Lord. And I need to understand that, that the power that I have and the self-control that I have, that has to be balanced on the pivot of love. Love that is sacrificial. Love that considers others before myself. Love that doesn't ask about what I can get, but what I can give. 
kind of love that Jesus demonstrated when he went to the cross. The kind of love that he enabled him to say, I've, I've eagerly desired this. I've looked forward to this day because of the joy set before. So church, as we head into 2021, let me ask you, let me challenge you. What are you looking forward to? Are you looking forward to walking with the Lord? Are you looking forward to, to, to being a child of the King? I, hey, maybe Jesus comes this year. That'd be pretty cool. I'd, I'd enjoy that. But you know what? If he doesn't, I've still got a promise in the Scripture that he's with me, and I don't got to be afraid. I can go through good times. I can go through hard times. I can go through it all. He promised he won't leave me. He promised he won't leave you. So what are you looking forward to this year? And, and let me close in saying this. If over the last year, over 2020, you, you have found, and, and, and if you're just being honest with yourself and being honest with the Lord, if in, if in all honesty you don't like it, I'm not asking you to like it, Sometimes we don't like the, the hard truth about ourselves and about where we've been and about what we've done. But if you have found that you have been subject to fear, not, not reverence of the Lord or not just concern about getting hurt that, that caused you to put your seatbelt on or something, but, but you've, you've been acting in delos, you've been living in a way that's unbecoming a believer. That's the kind of fear you've had. You've been making decisions based on that kind of a fear. Good news. As I said during communion, Jesus turned to Peter and said, look, Satan has asked to sift you, but I've prayed for you. I've prayed for you. That you won't lose your faith. That same Jesus is calling out to you today saying hey if you've been if you've been caught up with delos over this last year let's be honest about it let's lay it down i would challenge you symbolically but if you want to take it literally stand and rebuke that fear in the name of jesus because it doesn't come from him and commit yourself to walking in the reverent fear of the Lord today, tomorrow, as many days as the Lord gives you. Would you stand with us? We're going to pray. We're going to worship. Yeah, and I just, I just want you to be very honest with yourself. Very honest with the Lord. I mean, I could I could ask for a show of hands. I could ask for you to come down here. I could ask for you to look at me and catch my. I could ask all sorts of things. But the reality is, I don't need you to be honest with me. Right? I need you to be honest with you and with God. So, if that's been you, would you rebuke that fear? Would you determine I'm going to take a stand this year? Come what may, I'm going to take a stand. I'm not going to walk in fear. Lord, this morning we are standing and sitting, and Lord, we're just gathered around this room. I thank you for the, Lord, I thank you for your presence in this place. I thank you for each one that's here. Lord, those that are listening over the radio, those that are watching over Facebook. Lord, I pray right now your holy spirit whom i believe has been working from the very beginning of this message your holy spirit shine a spotlight on on all of our hearts and lord if there are any of us that are that are guilty of walking in that delos guilty of of lord living in a manner that's unbecoming of your great name jesus i pray that we would confess that to you Lord, that we, would, we wouldn't try to hide it. We wouldn't try to excuse it away. We wouldn't try to say, oh, well, no, not really. It was, yeah. 
Lord, that we just come clean to you. That we might be cleansed by you. Lord, I pray that, oh, Lord, that waves of blessing would wash over your people even now. Lord, even those that, that have been walking in Delos. Lord, even, even as those disciples sat in that boat and they saw you rebuke the wind and the waves and they heard that gentle rebuke, Lord, I, I, I pray that that same sense of awe, that same sense of who is this would wash over each one. And Lord, that not only would we confess that, but Lord, that we would make a determination to fear you and you alone, to honor, to revere, to respect you. Lord, to live each day for you. Lord, to walk by faith and not by sight. Lord, to trust that you've, you've got us. And Lord, that even as even as you, for the joy set before you, were able to endure the scorn of the cross. I pray that we, for the joy set before us, for the promise that we have, that you give us the strength, Lord, to endure whatever comes our way. We'll be quick to give you all the thanks and the praise in your wonderful name. Now, Lord, receive our worship. Be glorified, Jesus. Amen.
know, there's an important aspect to worship that we don't often do on a Sunday morning. I know some of you are saying, wow, he said amen and we're ready to go, but now he's getting back up there. Walking in faith and being built up in our faith and defeating the enemy and helping others to defeat the enemy isn't just about going to church and hearing a word and praying and saying, okay, I'm going to apply that. But in Revelation chapter 12, verse 11, it says this, they overcame him, that's the enemy, by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. They didn't love their lives so much as to shrink from death. We overcome the enemy by the blood of the lamb. He did, he, he did what we can't do. But we also have a, an inherent responsibility, and that is to do what we can, and that is the word of our testimony. And so I just wonder if there's anybody that would like to share. God's done something good in your life in the last man, you, 2020. God's done something good in the last year, the last month, last couple of months, whatever. And you're standing here, you think, well, I got something to say, but I'm not sure I want to say it because I just don't like getting up in front of people, blah, blah, blah. Your testimony is as much about building other people's faith as it is about sharing what God has done in you. Somebody here today just might need to hear what God has done for you, in you, through you, maybe even in spite of you in this year. So if you would like to share, if you've got something, and, and I'm going to ask you to try and keep it short and sweet for the sake of time, but if you've got something you'd like to share, I want to invite you to, to come up. We've got this cordless here. I think it's fired up and ready to work. I just want to give you an opportunity to share this morning. Judy, come on down. The rest of you, I guess, can sit unless you want to keep standing. <coughs> it's on. Is it on? It's on. Can you, you hear keep me? Keep it close. Can you hear me? Yep. <laughs> okay. Uh, I guess all of you know that Daryl had melanoma on the top of his head and the Lord brought him through that surgery on Thursday and I've just come up and prayed for uh, him to heal because he is a diabetic and he heals slowly and we need that graft to take and, and, and make him whole again. But also some of you know that my son was an alcoholic he was in a gutter a year ago, calling me on Christmas Day saying, Mom, I'm hungry. I'm living in my car. I have 57 cents and I'm cold. And I couldn't help him because my husband said, you're not going to help him. He has to help himself. And many of you, many, many of you prayed and prayed and prayed for him. And I rejoice today, like no other, that those prayers were answered. He got a job in Illinois. He's not drinking. He's, he's, been, he's been touched by the Lord, that only God could have done that, what he has done. Giving him that job, he's got a um, nice place to live. He's making decent money so he can pay us back as well as take care of himself. And, and that's probably one of the biggest answered prayers I have ever, ever had in my life. And I thank all of you for praying for my son and now my husband. Thank you. Sherilyn, I see you. Good to see you, by the way. We missed you. Life and work. Um, so uh, I work a lot, and this year has been very different. Uh, God has given me a different perspective 
Um, so I have worked since I was 13. You know, I work hard. I'm a very hard worker, and that's all I do is work. And I thought that because I, I'm a caregiver and I take care of people and my job sends me out regardless of what's going on. You know, if I'm dying, who cares? I need to go, <laughs> right? Um, but God gave me a different perspective this year because I thought I needed a different job. I thought that, you know, I'm being used too much. And I prayed and God told me, no, you need to stay here. Um, and God told me, to have a different perspective in this time we're living in he is what is important so when I go to my job and I see my clients I ask God for an opportunity to share him if I, if I get fired I'm willing to take that price because my perspective has changed God is who I live for God put me in this position to share him with others. That is my job. I have many people that die and that love Jesus. And there are people that I pray for that don't know Jesus. But my job is to share him. Regardless of how I'm inconvenienced or I feel, that's my love for him is to share him. So... Anybody else? Kristen. Hello, my name is Kristen, for those of you who don't know. Um, 2020 has been, surprisingly, a year of joy for me. Um, and I only say that because um, a couple years back, I had lost my niece. And years before that, I had my grandfather and an uncle decide to not to speak to us anymore. Um, for reasons, I'm not going to say what all happened, but they did basically said, even when we reached out, we don't want your prayers. And <laughs> this year, after um, my brother and sister-in-law had me failed attempts at, you know, getting conceiving a baby, um, my nephew was born in April. <laughs> and it's just, he's eight months old, and I love him every day. He's my little buddy. Um, however, just, like, one thing that God helped me is forgiving my fa my grandfather, especially throughout this time, and just opening my heart to that. And I always prayed, we, we prayed for him to come back to God before um, many times and we're like God you know what at this point we're just like if we don't see him in this life that's fine we'd rather see him in heaven and I would say that God answered that um, he ended up my grandfather we found out through one of the other church members that he went with um, was in the hospital with COVID and he ended up getting COVID pneumonia and um, he ended up not being he wasn't re responding no nothing and finally around 10 p.m. it's like God it's like the family members that were there said it's like his spirit was gone you could tell he was just a vessel at this point just a little bit breathing and I would say around 10 p.m. that night he actually was God allowed him to visit us and we were able to reconcile for the first time after like six years and now I can say that I know he's in heaven now and one thing that connected me so much to my grandfather was count your blessings and I was happy when pastor mentioned that and like there are so many times where I was at work and I was just like Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God hath done. Count your many blessings money cannot buy. And you will be singing as the days go by. And I just can't think of that song without thinking of my grandfather singing it. And it's just like I can't help but feel like he's just worth there with me, just like celebrating it with me. And although this year has been horrible for most of us, I would just say this year was definitely a year of joy for me. In 2021, I look forward to the year of favor that God has for me and my family, and hopefully uh, we're building that relationship that was lost, especially. So, thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Yes, sir. Ladies first. Come on, Betty. Betty, then Harlan. Um, 
I would like to thank everybody for, oh man, I can hear me, <laughs> for their prayers Wednesday night. When we were here, they announced uh, my nephew that has been paraplegic since he was born. I had his kidney removed, and he's doing beautiful. He even poops good, so. <laughs> so. Thank you, Joel <laughs> and David. So, and, uh, and my brother, my last brother out of five brothers, passed away this morning. I'm not real sure whether he knew God or not, but I do, so I'll pray for him. Thank you again for your prayers. Marlon. And make sure you run in case somebody jumps up. <laughs> so there's some great things that have happened this past year. And I want to just say that from the beginning. God is still in control. And there's no way that he doesn't know what's going on and know the outcome of it. But I want to just do as a side note saying, isn't it wonderful to be in a church that's not afraid of everything. That's what he was preaching about today. And how that we are open, we hug, we shake hands, don't have to wear a mask. Praise the Lord. There is a church around that's still doing all that kind of stuff. But um, just looking forward, actually going back first, my wife and I have been uh, really delving into uh, scripture and prophecy. And instead of fear, we are getting more bold. We're getting more confident. And I know that in the past, uh, if you look at this time and compare it with what's going to be in the future, it could be worse according to the world, but it could be much better according to God. And so that's what I'm looking forward to. We had a great year last year. We look at it as very positive. And this next year is even going to be more positive. Thank you, Harlan. Anybody else? Yes. I'm going to apologize in advance because I am always forgetting your name. Jean? Janie? Cindy? Yes. <laughs> Everybody else heard. Cindy. Cindy. I'm going to... I'm going to make a note that I don't have to be publicly embarrassed again. Okay. No, they're not. God knows. But I'm not him. Hello. I'm, I'm embarrassed to be up here. I want you to know I don't do this. Um, Put the microphone up a little up. higher. How about that? Okay, I can hear me, so I know you can. Um, uh, last year, last summer, I got really, really depressed, and I tried to commit suicide. Um, I, I have severe pain, and I just couldn't deal with it. And I tried to swallow my, well, I did swallow my whole bottle of oxycodone. But God did not let me die. He, he said, no. I mean, I, it should have worked. <laughs> but it didn't. And uh, I, they, I went to a rehab hospital for a week. And uh, I got closer to God. He used me there um, with other people. I'm a helper. And there was all these other people there that needed to dump their feelings and, and get, get it out. And I, and I just took it in, and I prayed with them, and I helped them, and all this stuff. And, and it was really strange to me to be so open and so bold with all these other people. I don't talk about Christ. That's just, you no, know, I keep it in. I'm quiet and all this stuff. But I did. I, pr I prayed with all these other people. And then in September, I needed to go again. I felt like I really needed to go because I felt like if I didn't get back to the hospital, I would try again. And so I told my husband, and we took me to the hospital. And they had a bed for me, and it 
you know, it was like God was sending me right back. And there were people there again that, that just needed me. And, and I felt his presence. And I prayed and I sang with these people. And there was people that came in for just a couple of days. And that's all they needed was just to feel God. And I came out of there so blessed. And since that temper, I have felt him on me. And in my house, there is a light. I can, I can see an aura. I don't know if you believe in them or not, but everything is brighter. There's a light everywhere in my room. And it is glowing. I have music. I sing and praise all day long, every day. I can't hardly move. So there's nothing I can do. <laughs> I sing and praise and pray for, for people. I have a list on my, win on my little mirror. I write with a wet wipe marker and I write down things and I pray. So I want to thank God for sending me to the hospital to get well and help all those other people. And it's since, ever since then, it's just been bright and cheery. I don't care what's going on or how bad I feel. Eh, just forget it, you know. God's with me and everything's bright and happy. And COVID can just, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Cindy. Thank you. I'm reminded of what Paul said, when I'm weak, then he's strong. So his strength is made perfect in our weakness. So anybody else don't want to shut you out? Going once. Going twice. Now I can I can think of a few that should, but I'm not gonna mention any names. Because I'm just not like that. So one more time. I'm not looking at anybody. Oh, Carlene. You weren't actually one of the names I was thinking of. That's okay. Well, I'm going to keep it very short. Um, this last year, when I needed him, he showed up. And, um, you know, it was the food thing. You know, I was without my food for several months. And that, that really taxed on me more than I thought. And in faith, he told me to put it in the shop. And when it was done, there was the money there to take care of it. So he shows up. Amen. He shows up. He shows up. All right, one last call. Going once. Go to wow. I should just keep saying one last call. Um, I like to wait till the last minute. I'm a procrastinator. Um, <laughs> exactly. Um, so this year, I mean, like with everyone else's year, there's been a lot of hard stuff this year. But um, it's also been one of the best years in my relationship with God and my relationship with other people. Um, just recently, I've been able to uh, move out, which was something that had been causing me stress to not be able to do. <laughs> and so, um, but I would, you know, financially, I wasn't. I wasn't totally prepared and I was like God you're gonna have to provide this money for me because I, I don't know how I'm gonna do this like I might not be able to eat next week but um, and so I there was one night I was up really late and I was like God I don't know how I'm gonna pay rent next month and I was like I, I trust you and I know that you will provide for me and the next day at work I got handed an envelope and there was a large cash bonus in there and it said Merry Christmas Emily and I was like wow like I knew you would provide but I was not expecting an envelope full of money like that's a little forward for me um so yeah God has just been really showing up in really big ways in my life this year and I'm excited for 2021 <laughs> thank you going once everybody's like no no let me go Okay, well, thank you to those of you that shared. Thank you for everybody else for listening. I hope your faith has been built. I hope you've been encouraged. I hope you are ready to put fear where it belongs. Stand up in that power, that love, that self-control. And before I pray, before I forget, 
I do want to say, if you have tried to call me lately, I lost my phone in the creek. And I, I got a replacement phone, but I got locked out of it because all my passwords are on my phone in the creek. So hopefully this week, I'll actually be able to, you know, communicate with people. Otherwise, you got to go through my wife or my daughter or my son-in-law. They know how to get a hold of me. And if you don't know them well enough, then your emergency probably isn't big enough to get a hold of me. So how rude is that to say? Come on. If you don't know my wife well enough, if you don't have her number, you can ask her before she leaves. You can get it, whatever. But I'm, I'm trying to get my phone back online. I'm actually secretly, not so secretly, kind of enjoying not having a phone. <laughs> but I need one. So anyway, would you, would you stand one last time? I'm going to pray. As always, these altars are open. You stay as long as you want. Stay as late as you want. Happy to pray with you. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for this day. Thank you for this opportunity. I thank you for the testimonies that have been shared. And, Lord, for the promise of your word and the challenge of your word. Let us grab hold of it, Lord, and let us be doers of your word. Not only today while it's fresh, but each and every day this year. And Jesus, I thank you again for the testimonies of those that have said, yeah, 2020 was kind of rough, but boy, God showed up. Thank you. Thank you for showing up, and I thank you in advance for showing up, not only today, but every day that you give us. Now, Lord, I speak your grace over your people. Would you go before us as we go our separate ways? Be glorified and honored, Jesus, in your name. Amen. Well, Lord, bless you. Have a fantastic day. Tell somebody you love them before you take off.